Hajj obviously is an expression of people's iman. It is not easy to go to Hajj. It's a huge financial strain. Some people save their entire life and they can't go. When you go to Hajj, you see people that are 92 years old. You start feeling tired and you see a hundred year old guy jog by you and you're like, oh, I should be ashamed. I should, you know. Subhanallah, these people are making Hajj for the first time in their life. And they're having this grand up. Allah has invited them. So it's obviously a show of Iman. It's not just supposed to be a show of Iman. It's supposed to be a show of our loyalty to the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. It's ironic to me that the Messenger alayhi salatu wa sallam, one of his missions was to clean up the house of Allah. To clean up the idols, get rid of them. And clean the house of Allah so only Allah can be worshipped at the Kaaba. That was one of his missions. And when you go and you find Muslims, forget cleaning the idols, that's a far problem for us. You have hujaj, people that are doing hajj, knowledgeable people, educated people, drinking a bottle of water and chucking it on the street. They're not waiting for a trash can or something, somebody eats a banana peel, throws it down. When you leave the field of Muzdalifah the next morning, it looks like a trash dump. You can't step without stepping on trash. You can't do it. And these are people who believe this is sacred territory, right? It's shocking. Nobody will go to the Washington Monument. Nobody's gonna go to the 9-11 Memorial and throw a Pepsi can. Nobody's gonna do it. That's sacred ground. This is something a nation respects. We should have dignity for this place. But you go to Mina and you go to Muzdalifah and you go... <laughs> even in the streets of Mecca, what do you find? You find trash. And who's throwing that trash? Don't blame the government. Oh, this, you know, the Saudi government's doing it. What? There's millions of Muslims. We're the ones. We don't even have the simple etiquette of the Messenger's lifestyle sallallahu alayhi wa sallam of how much he cared about being clean. How much he cared about not being a source of adding to the, the filth in a society spiritually and physically speaking. And physically speaking. And yet, at the same time, we can say that we went for the sake of Allah. So there's a disconnect in our minds. There's a disconnect between what we think we're doing for Allah and what we're actually supposed to be doing for Allah azza wa jal. We have to bridge that disconnect. We have to become people that embody, that live the example of the Messenger sallallahu alayhi wa not just in the ibadat, not just in the acts of doing hajj, not just in the act of making salat. You know, there are so many times announcements are made, I don't know if they're made anymore, inshallah they're not, about people parking their cars improperly or blocking other people's driveways. Brother, if you come for Jum'ah, don't park your car improperly, don't park on other people's lawns and things like that. All over the country these announcements are made. Isn't it like a sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa to worry about the rights of the neighbor? Weren't the neighbors of the Rasul sallallahu alayhi wa extremely happy with him? The best of neighbors, the best of friends. And if there was ever something wrong, then it was done by the neighbors, never by him sallallahu alayhi wa How many times he gave us wasiyah to take care of our neighbors? And you go around the country and you'll find people that are in the neighborhood of the masjid in America. Educated Muslims, right? You can't even say, oh, this is the ignorance of the Muslims that don't have a good education. All across America, you have big masjids that are built. And guess who's really unhappy by the masjid? The entire neighbor. The whole neighborhood is unhappy. Why are they unhappy? Oh, because they hate the Muslims and these kuffar? No, because we park on their lawns. Because we block their driveway. Because we don't care when we make a mess. That's why. A couple of months down the road, inshallah ta'ala, the month of Ramadan is coming. May Allah give us the rizq of Ramadan once again. When the month of Ramadan is coming, we go have iftars. Even the masajid hold iftar. I'm talking about the religious community. We hold iftar. And what do we do? How much food is wasted? Every time. How many bags of garbage and how much food is in those bags of garbage? Is this the sunnah of our messenger sallallahu alayhi wa Is this what we're supposed to be doing? And then we complain about the state of the ummah. We're not even taking care of the simplest things that mean that we are following the path of the messenger sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. This guy will regret it on judgment day. You know we talk about the high goals of Islam, how we have to give Islam to America, how we have to give Islam to the world. I believe in those goals. But you know what I also believe in? You can't talk about the hundredth floor until you enter the first floor. <laughs> We're still in the basement. We haven't even come to the first floor yet. We have to deal with the basics, the fundamentals. And fundamentally our deen requires us to become responsible people, ethical people, people that care about their surroundings, people that care about their family members, their neighbors, their neighborhoods. This is what they do. I should not go into any masajid. Like, you know, they take their shoes off and they just throw them wherever and they go. Why? Would you do this if you go to somebody's house? They invite you as a guest to their house and you take your shoes off and you just throw them wherever? Would you do that? It's a show of disrespect, isn't it? Isn't it? And here we are, guests of the house of Allah. Here we are. Allah invited us to this house. This is not your house, this is not my house, this is Allah's house. 
It deserves respect. Some sentiment is supposed to be inside of us. That we show it this honor, you know. The way we carry ourselves, the way we greet with each other. These are small, small things I'm talking about. But they're not impossible for us to change. We just don't even think about them when we think about Islam. We just think Islam is about, you know, you should recite more and more of the Qur'an, which I believe you should. You should memorize as much of the Qur'an as possible, I believe you should. Absolutely. But you know what? The more Qur'an we recite, the more it becomes a hujja on us that we change ourselves. That we change the way we carry ourselves. That we have a different tone in our speech. That we have a different level of brotherhood among each other. How many Muslims come to the masjid? You guys come every Jum'ah you come. Probably every Jum'ah you're at this masjid. As you're leaving, how many people that you don't know you say salam to with a smile? Or you're just looking at the guy like, when's he gonna get out of the way? saying, get to my shoes, man. I gotta get out of here. Is that your attitude? You're together as people of La ilaha illallah. There should be a natural love among you. And that's something the Messenger put inside the believers. فَأَصْبَحْتُمْ بِنِعْمَتِهِ إِخْوَانًا فَأَلَّفَ بَيْنَ قُلُوبِكُمْ He put love between your hearts. I don't even know you as a Muslim. I shouldn't give you a dirty look. Just because you're in New York and the dirty look is standard, doesn't mean you give a dirty look to another Muslim. I know you're living in Queens, I understand, I lived here too. And I know it, when you go outside of New York, and you're walking down a street in North Carolina or like Memphis, Tennessee, and some random stranger with a cowboy hat on looks at you and goes, how's it going? Nice day, isn't it? They're like shocked, why is this guy smiling? Has he got, like, has he got a gun in his pocket or something? Why is he smiling at me? And then you realize those people are closer to the, a prophetic way. The Prophet ﷺ, his standard was to be smiling, not to be frowning. You know, to be friendly to others, to care for others, to look out for others. These are the kinds of things we have to value and bring back into our communities, into our personal lives, into our characters.